my beautiful friends and welcome back to my channel. This is Nova Gnome Creations and I'm Nova and I'm so happy to see you today. Today I am going to be working on attaching some cups to the inside of a crop top. So um, you may have seen this halter crop top uh, commission that I've been working on. Um, I just finally got the cups in to attach them onto here. They were uh, requested by the person who I'm making the top for. So um, I can finally attach it onto here. I will try to uh, make sure I remember to link the video in the description box if you wanted to see more about this crop top, what yarn I'm using, the pattern, all the details like that. Um, because I do have a video about this top that I was working on. Um, but this video is going to be me attaching. This is my first time attaching a cup to a top. Um, I'm pretty new still to wearables and uh, crochet. I've done a few at this point, um, but this is my first time attaching a cup. And I have an idea of how I want to do it, so I thought I would go ahead and make a video um, of the process in case anybody else can find it useful and maybe it would be um, something that you want to try doing in the future. So let's go ahead and jump into the process of attaching a cup to a crop top. And just to show you guys my workstation right now, I've got some cozy fall vibes going on with this vanilla chai snickerdoodle donut apple cinnamon ca uh, candle. It's like one of those candles that has like the three different scents as you go. So I was like, yes, getting the uh, fall, cozy fall vibes going on. So I finally got these cups in and you guys know that I was uh, making a small crop top if you saw my other video. Um, but if you didn't, no big deal. I'm making a small crop top um, and this one is finished. This is the back of it. So it's got straps that crisscross over the shoulders and then come down and strap in between the two sides of here and then you can tie them. So it's got like a nice uh, strappy back kind of thing going on. Um, and here's what the front looks like in case you didn't see that video. And I will link that video in the description box if you're interested in uh, what yarn I used or any other details about the crop top itself. Um, but here's what it looks like. And I got, uh, this is a commission and the person who wanted it wanted it to have cups in it. Um, so I got these cups off of Amazon and I'm going to attach them inside. And this is my first time doing this, but um, thought I would take you guys along for the process in case anyone else um, might be planning to do this and looking for some ideas of how to attach it. So I could attach it with sewing thread, but um, I'm not a sewer. <laughs> and I feel like the sewing thread, um, it just wouldn't look very good and it would probably feel rough against the skin. And I don't know, I'm just not comfortable with it. So what my original plan was is basically to go all around the edges uh, and poke holes, um, similar to how you do when you make um, kitchen towels with the crochet toppers, um, where you crochet right into it um, and just do single crochets all the way around is my original idea, um, or was my original idea. Now that I have it here, uh, and then when I did that, when once I did that, I was planning to sew it on with with uh, the yarn going through those single crochets and through the top. Now that I have it here, though, um, these cups, although they are the smalls, they are um, a little bit bigger than the shape that I have here before you get to this kind of caged effect. And I'm worried about the cup showing through because the, while it fits with plenty of room in the cup itself, um, this caged effect kind of starts right before the cups end on either side. And I could give it like a little bit of, you know, a stretch when I'm attaching it, when I'm sewing it on, just to make sure that I'm sewing it before it gets to the caging, but I'm not sure if I want to do that. So I'm going to play around with it a little bit and kind of get an idea. Um, I could just sew directly through the cup um, with my yarn and sew it on that way. Um, because adding a little bit of a single crochet border is going to make it a little bit wider. 
but I don't know if that's really going to make a huge difference visually. But structurally, I think it would be nicer on the inside. So I might still do the crochet border. But anyway, that is where I'm sitting at right now. So uh, I'm going to think about it, mull it over a little bit, and then I will come back and we can start this process and see how it goes. So here I am stabbing through with a sewing needle as my first step for getting these holes in here. Um, I'm just using um, kind of a thicker sewing needle. Uh, it's the one that I use to sew in my end sometimes when I'm uh, wanting the yarn to kind of uh, go inside the threads, I guess. Um, so it's a thicker sewing needle to start with, but it's got a nice sharp tip so that it can puncture. And I'm just going through and putting these, mm, maybe like a pinky tip width apart, I, I would say, probably would be a good uh, kind of form of measurement. I'm just eyeballing it, uh, not actually measuring it or anything. Um, but I'm planning on putting a couple of stitches into each one so they don't need to be right up against each other. And I'm just working my way all the way around, making sure that I uh, put one at each of the tips. And I'm staying a little bit lower down than the sewn seam at the edges. Um, just because I don't want to mess with the seam, I would like to keep the cups from having anything fray um, by crocheting just below where they already seamed it off for me. And then after that, I went around with my yarn needle, which is even thicker, and just went through those holes again. So now I'm just going up to another slightly larger thing to kind of stick in here and widen these holes. Um, and I'm using a two millimeter crochet hook, which I probably will try to use this size to do the actual crocheting into this. Um, like I said, similar to how you do a crocheted towel topper, um, usually that first round uh, row that you do on the top of a, cro of a towel, you use a smaller hook um, because it's easier to stab through the fabric with it. Um, so my idea is that if I tried to use the right size hook for this yarn, I would need a very large hole. <laughs> so... I'm going to attempt to use this uh, crochet hook to actually do the crocheting with. And I want to make sure that there's enough room in these holes because I'm going to be putting several stitches uh, into each hole. So I just want to make sure I'm able to work into it easily. So I started out with a sharp uh, sewing needle and then I went up to a um, thicker like yarn needle and now I'm using a two millimeter crochet hook. And I'm sure that there are probably more efficient ways to do this, um, but this is just the way that I'm doing it. Maybe uh, like a fabric hole puncher or something would work, but I don't even know if that's a thing, but I'm sure it is. I feel like I can imagine it. I know they have like little fabric, like rivet, rivet machines to like put rivets onto things that look like hole punchers. But yep, just working my way around. Working my way around, walking. <laughs> uh, little Avril Lavigne uh, moment there for you guys. And I think I'm almost back to the beginning. And then we're gonna go ahead and try crocheting into these. So fingers crossed. And this was back to the beginning. All right, so we've got these nice big holes now. Well, relatively, in relation to what they were, they're nice big holes now. Can I go ahead and grab my yarn? I'm using the same yarn that I used for the top because I want it to um, match. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Give myself a little bit of a tail and I'm gonna make a slip slip knot 
and then I'm going to start at the top pull on my uh, oops grabbing the wrong part pull on my slip knot to tighten it up and then I'm going to pull this through I tightened it up a little bit too much but that's okay and slip stitch on yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna redo that and not tighten that up quite so much I did do my um, holes a little distance from the edge so they will be like a little bit of a longer stitch but I did that on purpose because I wanted to did I just do the exact same thing because I was busy talking um, I wanted to uh, make sure that I left a little bit of a um, allowance where the sewing was so that my edges stay uh, you know not uh not frayed okay that works better so it is gonna be a little weird crocheting with such a small hook for this but um you know you make do so i'm gonna go ahead and also chain one and then i'm just going to do some single crochets and i want to make sure i crochet over my tail so that i don't have to try to sew that in later So there's one single crochet. Oops. Two single crochets. The hardest part is going to be just not splitting your yarn when you're using such a small hook. Being a little generous with yourself here. All right, so I've got uh, two single crochets on here. I am gonna actually shift them to the side. So you see that like right here is the point of the top of this. I'm gonna shift these onto the right side and then I'm going to do two more single crochets on kind of the left side of the point since this is a corner. And of course, this is a bit of a splitty yarn, so I'm having to make do with the um, it wanting to split when I'm using this little hook. But that's okay. All right, and our last stitch. Let's see if we can fit a fourth one in here. Ta-da, we did. And then there we go. We've got a nice curving kind of tip and just make sure that when you're pulling your yarn through you're giving yourself enough slack you know to kind of extend those stitches and make them tall um since our holes are you know i don't know was that a centimeter probably probably about a good centimeter from the edge you want to make sure you're giving yourself like a centimeter height otherwise you're going to cinch in and roll the edges and that's not what we want <laughs> But I think that this is going to work lovely. And like I said, I'm just going to keep working over my tail as I go. If you lose any yarn to a split, you can always just go down and grab it back up or pull the whole stitch out and redo it either way. Okay, so let's try. I did four in the tip. Let's try two here. And move on and uh, if it doesn't seem like enough we'll go back and we'll do three I don't think we're gonna need to do four single crochets in each one um, unless we're at the corners just to round the corners you know yeah I think two is gonna work oh I'm so sorry all right, let's see. Let's just continue doing two for now. See what we think. Not hard at all to pull them back out and adjust if we need to be, if need be. So this is something that you can uh, you can make that decision for yourself based on the yarn that you're using, um, how far away your stitches are from each other, like how far away your holes are, you know, all of that good stuff. Just kind of feel it out and f and decide how many stitches you think you need 
of course you're welcome to just do exactly what I'm doing but you know yours might be slightly different so just kind of explaining to you my thought process behind it in case you need to do it slightly different so I did four to round the corners and I'm doing two in each stitch. Um, it's going to take me a while to get around so I'm not going to film the whole process probably. Um, but I'm just going to continue to do two in every stitch and then when I get to the corner I will do two on one side of the corner and then two on the other side of the corner. So there'll be a total of four stitches in the corner stitches or the corner holes. And so far so good. This is looking exactly like I was hoping for. And then what I'm thinking is we will sew through the top of the stitches and the fabric of our crocheted crop top or whatever you're making. You don't have to be making a crop top to do this. You could put this in a tank top. You could put this in whatever. Bathing suit. And almost made it to our other corner. And when we get a little bit closer to the corner, probably the next stitch. I'm going to cut this tail so that I'm not trying to hide it in the corner also because it'll pop out with it being a roundabout. Oops, I almost just tried to do a half double crochet or a double crochet or something. <laughs> All right, there we go. And since we are about to do our corner stitch again like I said I'm gonna give this a nice little tug make sure it's nice and taut and then I'm going to cut that tail that I've been working over all right and then we're to our corner so like I was saying do two stitches on this side skip over this point and do two stitches on that side so here's how I'm gonna do that There's one stitch, and there's two. You'll notice that they're both on the right side right now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rotate the cup as I'm going, and then that's gonna put these stitches on the left side of the cup, or the left side of the uh, corner and it'll look like so so you can see right there the point of the corner and that we've got both stitches on this one side and then we're just going to continue doing our two single crochets in each hole And it's looking like that, which is exactly what I was hoping for. So I'm very, very happy with that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do the other two sides. And when I'm finished with that, I'll come back and show you what it's looking like. All right, guys. So I finished going around and doing my single crochets. I went ahead and tied off and I left myself a nice length of yarn for sewing the cup onto my top. But here is how it came out, and I am very happy with it. I think it's actually pretty cute, which is kind of funny because it's literally just a cup. But <laughs> I think that came out very pretty.
Um, it does take a while since you have to poke the holes so many times and then you can finally crochet into them, but I think it's worth it. Um, and what's cool about this is, you know, how I was saying that I am uh, was concerned about it lining up and, you know, possibly showing through this kind of caging effect that goes around the cup sides. Um, well, if it does, it's just going to be the same fabric. It's going to be the same uh, yarn that shows through. So when I sew this on, if it shows through, it should just appear the same as the rest of the yarn. So that should work out perfectly. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to find the end of my yarn here, there it is, uh, and I'm going to thread it onto my curved uh, darning needle, which is a yarn needle. Uh, and I'm going to work in the top of these single crochets and in the inside of my top. Okay. So I'm going to, um, when I pick up the stitches on the top, I want to make sure I don't just go right through and do it that way um, just to keep it like pretty looking on the front. Um, if you can see me coming through to sew, you know, that's not going to be as pretty, especially at parts where this variegated yarn doesn't match the color that I'm currently sewing into. You know, you'd have random black coming through the red and, and you don't want that. So I'm just going to line it up how I want it, kind of get a feel for it. So I'm thinking like this, and you got to keep in mind that the point of the cup is actually right here. Um, you know, I stopped by slip stitching from this last uh, single crochet and this last one to the first of four single crochets that come out of this uh, point. So you want to line it up so that the point of the cup is at the top where the point of the, or where the strap uh, begins. Okay, so laying this out, kind of conforming it to the shape of the cup. Kind of hold that down. Do one of these numbers. All right. So I'm going to slide through the inside stitches. So I picked up the inside of this stitch. And then I'm going to go through my um, single crochets. So I went through the next single crochet. And it's going to take me a minute to pull all this yarn through because I left myself a, a very long tail for sewing with. And just like so. And you'll notice on the front... I, it's right here. This stitch is the one that I went through. You'll notice you don't see the stitch at all because I only picked up the back. And then I'm just going to continue around doing the same thing. So pick up the back of these, these loops. And I'm going to go through... And we'll say right here. Um, you don't got to sew every single stitch on. I'm going to pull this through a little bit. Uh, you don't got to sew every single stitch on to the top. You can skip a couple stitches, you know, do it every other stitch or every third stitch or whatever. Um, I just did that many stitches, like doing two in each, each hole, um, so that it had a nice solid yarn border without gaps in it. So, just going to keep going like so. Alright, and I'm going to work my way all the way around my cup doing that. And then uh, I will have it attached and then I'll do the other cup. Alrighty. I have finished attaching the cup. So um, here's what it looks like on the inside and I'm going to try to move all these straps out of the way so you can get a comparison. 
So here is with the cup attached and here is without the cup attached. Uh, and what I ended up being able to do was I attached, um, like I was showing you guys with, I, I went through the, uh, single crochets on here and I went through the base of the double crochets. Make sure that you can see what I'm talking about. Um, you know how I said that there's this kind of cage effect almost? Well, each of those has, is a double crochet. So I went through the single crochets that are on the cup and then the bottom of the double crochets. And that's where I just attached all the way around and it ended up working out. So you definitely won't see any cup through the uh, caging. It did shape the top um, much more like booby, booby shaped at the boob parts. Um, but you know, that's probably the kind of the uh, reason for the boob cup. So that, uh, that should be a good thing. And then here is the comparison at the front. So without a boob cup, looks like this and then with the boob cup looks like this definitely a huge difference this feels like a top you'd buy at the store um because this has like a shape to it that stays you know and this one is like flimsy um and there's nothing inside of it to keep it you know contoured that way so very cool. I think it was definitely worth adding that in. Honestly, I didn't think it needed it, but now that I see it with it in there, I uh, can definitely appreciate the effect it gives. Like, very much. Alright, so that is how I chose to attach my cups to the inside of this commissioned top that I did. Um, you guys will have to let me know what you think. And if you have done them a different way, I would love to hear how you attach yours. Um, but hopefully this helps, uh, also if you plan on attaching a cup in the future and you weren't sure how to go about it, maybe this will be, um, a way for you to consider also. So now I got to go through and do it all over again. <laughs> got to go start poking holes in my other one. Um, but I hope everybody has a fantastic day and I will see you guys again real soon. Bye guys.